That's right, in today's video we're going to be looking at upgrading my Ring door view cam to this bad boy. Now this has only just come out. There aren't many reviews of it around, so I've not been able to do much sort of prep for this video, so I do apologise if it's not its usual brilliant quality. So yeah, this is actually called the Ring Battery Video Doorbell Plus. That's its full title on Amazon, but on here it just says Ring Battery Doorbell Plus. Um, but it's essentially the same thing. And this is a new generation of Ring Battery Doorbells. I've obviously done a video on the door view camp, which I'll put a link up to in that corner. And I've also installed and did a video about the Ring Doorbell 4 that I installed at my mum and dad's house, which I'll put a link to up there. Um, so yeah, I'm fairly au fait with the Ring ecosystem. I've also got a Ring alarm system. Um, I did a video on that, unsurprisingly. Link up there. So yeah, this is their latest and greatest. So this is slightly different from previous iterations of the Ring battery doorbells, whereby it offers full head-to-toe view. So it's got 150 degree viewing angle on both the horizontal and vertical axes whichever way around that is. And it also has a higher resolution camera as well. So instead of being at 1080p, it's at 1536p. The thing you might not know about the Ring ecosystem is you can run it with no additional cost, or you can get a Ring subscription, which unlocks more features, but it costs you money. So in the UK at the moment, the standard price for the Ring subscription is £3.49 per month or £34.99 for a whole year. And basically that's done per device. So if you have two Ring cameras, it's £3.49 per camera. Obviously, if you're stepping up and you've got more than two cameras and maybe the alarm system, you can pay £8 a month and that covers all the devices. Yeah, basically the more Ring devices you get, the cheaper it gets. As I say, you don't need to have the subscription because without it, the camera will still work. It's not completely dumb, but there are some better features when you pay for the subscription. So out of the box, without paying anything extra, you get a one year limited warranty, motion activated notifications, real time video with live view, two way talk, theft protection, and hassle free cancellation. I don't know what that last one means. So basically it is a usable product without the subscription. So if you want to pay the £3.49 a month, you get all of those free benefits as well as person alerts. So it actually tells you if it recognizes a human being rather than just motion alerts, which could be a car or a human. A rich notification. So that means that when you get a notification on your phone that someone's at your door or someone's walked past the camera, it actually shows you in the notification a small snapshot of what it can see. So you can just have a quick look if you want to without having to go into the Ring app, which I find really useful. 10% off selective Ring products at ring.com. It's got video saving and sharing, so you can save all the videos that the Ring records. It also, on top of that, it also has extended video storage up to 180 days. Uh, you can download up to 50 videos at once and you can also capture snapshots from the videos as well. You don't need to pay the £3.49 if you don't want to, and also included with it is a 30-day free trial if you want to give it a go. I would say absolutely go for the Ring Protect. It's really good, um, it works fantastically well, but it is another cost to factor in. Now, talking of cost, this will cost you right now in the UK, £159.99 but it is their flagship top of the range one so you expect to pay more. Now this is battery operated but you can also wire it if you want to. You don't have to but you can if you want to so it's good to have a little bit of flexibility. I will not be wiring it in in this installation because really I don't want to drill through the nice flat new plaster that I've got. 
I just want to stick it outside and I'm fairly happy having it in battery mode. I would say on average a battery in our existing ring doorbell lasts about a month maybe. I think they say something ridiculous like oh it will last six months. It absolutely will not. Now uh, the only problem is with this is if you do want to change the battery you do have to get the little screwdriver out whereas the existing door view cam that I've got you just pop the back cover off but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So basically in this video today I'm going to unbox it, we'll have a little look at it and then we'll go and install it outside and then we'll just have a little play around with it and we could be able to compare how my old doorbell looks versus how my new doorbell looks. I think there's going to be quite a boost in quality. Talking of boost in quality, apparently this has colour night vision, which is something that's sort of been coming out more in like security cameras and Ring have just started embracing it with their cameras as well. So you should be able to see colours at night, maybe. We'll see how that works, we'll test it. I mean, I have seen one video review where it just looked a bit strange but he the reviewer did have a weird kind of light so i don't know if that was messing things up but we'll find out for ourselves in good time let's get it open yes yeah, so I'm, I'm planning on doing the whole shebang so we'll set everything up i'll show you the software we can have a little look around and yeah we'll just see how it works so you know you might want to skip ahead to different bits in the video I put chapter links in the description so you can just skip to the bit that interests you or just watch it all. Now I always find that Ring products are packaged beautifully and uh, this doesn't seem to be any exception there. It looks good. Well, let's start with the boring admin bits first. So let's get this guy out. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's so cool. Okay, so what we've got here is the charging cable. The batteries have a micro USB connection on the bottom of them and uh, yet you charge them through a USB-A connector and uh, this is the tool that you use for actually getting the battery in and out. Now some of the ring tools they're actually double ended and you can pull it out and swap it over but this is just a single ended guy so you need to keep this safe. This is important for the battery. And yeah, we've got the charging cable. Charging cable's not particularly long, but any high quality micro USB cable will do. Aha, so this is the door wedge. So this allows you to mount the doorbell at slightly different angles. There you go, you can see it's flush and you can sort of angle it more towards your door or away from, I guess, depending on where you're going to put it. I don't think I'm going to need to use this um, and you might not either because of the way that the view is so wide it shouldn't be too much of a problem. That's the theory at least. Right what else have we got? I like this so this is screws and fixings. Um, I won't crack them open because I don't want them going everywhere but they're clearly labelled A, B, C, D. So that will be helpful for the installation guide so you can see what's going where. Now it's got stickers to say that there is audio and video monitoring. I don't know if it's the law you have to put these up. I think you're meant to at least let people know that they're going to be recorded both audioly and visually. Right, okay, so we've got a setup guide and uh, safety information and warranty. So that's telling you what's inside those little packages and uh, the different mounting options. Now D looks like got like a wire nut and that's what they use mostly in America for installation of wires. I don't use uh, Wagos as much, they use these wire nuts. And it tells you the tools you needed. You'll need a drill with a six millimeter drill bit and a PH2 screwdriver. I have all of those and also it's telling you that the uh, ring security screwdriver bit is there. Package B contains some extra screws because when you're changing the battery and you're screwing underneath then uh, sometimes the screws just sort of fly out and uh, you can lose them so they do have extra screws. Actually something that lot, not many people know about ring doorbells is if someone does unscrew it and steal it 
you can actually block it in the app. If you report it to Ring, Ring will send you a brand new doorbell to put up because basically once they're stolen and have been blocked in the app, they're basically blacklisted and can't be used again. So they are pretty much bricks, but, but that is something whether you've got the Ring Protect plan or not. So that's cool. It's telling us how we install it. Interesting, okay, so it recommends that it should be at least 1.2 meters off the ground. I did not know that it recommended that. I will uh, bear that in mind. Right, we've got our bits and pieces all there. Let's have a look at the guy himself. <laughs> so there it is. Let's um, take the cover off. There we go, don't have fingernails. So there it is, that is the guy itself. You don't realize just how large they are until you're up close to them. It is quite the thick boy, but you know, I don't think it's much bigger or any bigger than the standard ring doorbells. There's my phone for comparison. And um, it's got a sticker on the bottom that's telling you Caution, don't use the big screws in this hole under here, use the little screws. Some idiots drilled in one of those big screws into the bottom, haven't they? Right, so around the back, what have we got, what have we got? So we've got the four holes here that we will use to screw it into the wall and the electrical connectors are under here as well. So if you were to connect it to uh, an approved power source, then um, yeah, the connectors are under there. You can actually get solar chargers. I don't know if the ones that are out for the existing ring doorbells will work with this one. Um, probably, I don't know. I'm not sure how the mounting works. Yeah, so you have to pull it up and away. There we go. So that's the light and button there. And yeah, the battery is just replaced by pushing down on that. Pulling out, and then to replace, you put back in. Now with the batteries, I would recommend getting another one of these spare, because they do take a while to charge. We're talking like sort of six or so hours, maybe, maybe longer. And ideally, you don't really want to have the doorbell offline for that long. Maybe have it off at night but obviously you can't see any bad guys coming at night. So yeah, what I've got, I've got several uh, spare batteries. So basically they're all in rotation and when one goes flat, I've already got a spare one to just go and slot straight in and I don't have to worry that the camera's offline while I'm charging it. I'll put a link in the description to some extra batteries. There are third party batteries. I don't know how I feel about third parties at the best of times. And a lot of them on Amazon don't have great reviews. So I would personally say maybe it's a bit of a false economy if you don't buy the Ring proved batteries. There's that micro USB connector and you just basically plug the cable straight into the battery. I think there's like a charging dock as well that you can get for it now. And that uses those connectors there. And there are some status LEDs on here, a green one and an orange one. And basically while it's on charge, the green and orange will show. And when it's fully charged, the green one will show. What we should do now is get it powered up and connected to the app and we can start the set up -y stuff here at the desk. So let's do that. Let's put the battery in. Okay. Oh. It's doing stuff. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just put it down there. Okay, so let's go into the app and set up a device. We want to set up a doorbell and we've got to scan the QR code. So the QR code is here on the side of the device. So this it's good to do the setup here inside rather than messing around outside. Okay, we are scanned. Um, okay, so it's asking where I want to set up the doorbell. Obviously you can't see that, but that is my home address. Um, we will give it a name, we'll call it front door. Look, it's really hammering home that warning about using the correct screw in the bottom of the device. 
Some people have destroyed their batteries by putting a long screw in, silly billies. Right, yep, yeah, we know. Okay, so locate bag B. That is where the security screws are. I have found the security screws. Charge and insert the battery, we've done that. Next, get your Wi-Fi password, okay. Get closer to your ring doorbell. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> I'm near the device, there we go. So it'll probably use Bluetooth to connect. Oh, there we go. Um, right. Connecting to Wi-Fi, just yeah. a moment. That looks like some sort of reset button there. Still connecting, maybe get yourself a coffee. No, Nick, I've got a video to record. There we go, success. Doorbell is set up and ready to protect now you. Installing an update. Okay. It's take several minutes. There you go, it's doing the update install, that's fine. Okay, so while it's doing that, we can have a little look at a few bits and pieces in the app. Okay, so let's have a little look at the installation guide. Uh, battery power only. Mount it approximately four feet, 1.2 meters above the ground. We will remember to do that. Um, what's it going on? Is it going on a soft surface like wood or something harder? It's going on a harder surface. Okay, pre-drill your holes with a quarter inch masonry drill bit and push the anchors into the hole. Um, there are no steps leading to my door. Again, please don't put the screws in the bottom. There we go, screw it in. So we've got to use the screws from bag A. So screw it in. You need a Phillips screwdriver with a slim profile, okay. Yeah, because you've got to get quite deep into these holes here. Okay, install the faceplate, yeah. Okay, right, well, we know how to do it. Um, share this device. Okay, so I'm gonna share it with Vicky. You can choose what cameras in your Ring ecosystem you share with different users. Obviously, it's Vicky's house as well, so um, be a bit mean not to. Yeah, we'll grant access. There we go, sharing completed, front door shared, excellent. Okay, so you can link up Ring cameras. So basically, we've got a camera at the side of the house on the driveway, as well as this Ring doorbell. So sometimes it's a good idea to link your devices. So for example, if the camera spots someone on the driveway, it will then go to the doorbell camera. Oi, oi, doorbell camera. There's someone on the driveway, start recording, and it will capture both. And obviously you can make it work in the opposite direction. So if there's someone at the door, you will start the driveway camera recording. Yeah, so you've got sort of like full round coverage. Obviously the more cameras you've got, the more coverage you've got, and if you link them all up, it will basically record everything, which, which is quite handy. Um, so we'll link it to the driveway camera. Now, obviously, at the moment, we've got my old front door and the living room camera. We don't want to link it with the living room camera. So we'll link it up with the other one. Okay, so when front door detects motion, your other devices will record event. So that's fine. So basically, if someone is detected on this front door camera, it will fire up the driveway camera as well. Um, we don't want to set it to do anything to the other ones. We don't want to make it so the driveway lights come on. That's not really necessary. Cool. There we go. It's linked. Lovely. Um, we don't have a chime. You can buy ring doorbell chimes that will chime <laughs> like an old fashioned doorbell. We don't have those we basically just get notifications on our phone or on the um, A word, Amazon smart devices. Um, skip for now, make motion work for you. We will skip this for now because we will set up the motion detection and things and the zones that it uses once it's on the doorbell. There's no point in doing it while it's here. Um, and again, privacy zones and audio settings will do that at the door, right. There you go. So now we've got a front door and um, let's go live to the front door. There you go. <laughs> you can see my notes dotted around me. Um, that's, what, that's what it looks like. That is the live view. That's um, really quite nice. You've got the 
I think the colour's really good. The colour looks grand. I mean, obviously, it's very well lit in here, but that is pretty awesome. And you can control um, opening the microphone or the speaker so you can hear what's happening or you can speak to someone. We won't do that. What are the controls here? Oh, and you can like turn the lights on on the driveway camera if you wanted to. I won't do that for now. So there you go. That's, that's that. Hello. Considering it's going to the cloud via the Wi-Fi, it's actually pretty much instant. That's really smart. I like that. Right. Okay. So we'll end live. Doesn't matter. So look, there you go. You can it's detected the motion of me I'm jabbering away. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I think what we need to do now is go downstairs and actually install this beast outside. So um, let's go outside. Okay, firstly, apologies for the wind noise. It is quite a blustery day, so um, yeah, might not be ideal. So I've measured out 1.2 meters and that is about there. So it's actually a lot lower than I was expecting, but that's fine. I think it's a good idea to sort of put it where it says it should be to give the best possible experience. Now I've marked some holes for the bottom right there and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill those first and get the bottom screwed in and then do the ones at the top because there's not actually all that much room to get like even a pencil to mark out the holes. I'm going to use a small drill bit to mark out the top holes once it's in position. The gaps between where the holes are on the doorbell actually don't sit very nicely with the mortar line so I might have to go into the mortar for two of the holes, but it's, it's less than ideal, but there's literally no way else of doing it. So uh, yeah, I've got my two holes marked up. Well, I say two holes, I've got four because I had to work out where the mortar lines would be and stuff like that. But yeah, got my two holes there and uh, let's get drilling. Okay, so I'm going in with a three mil drill bit to start with. Just want to take it easy. So I'm also starting the hole off on the sort of drill mode and then I will finish it off with the hammer. Okay, I'm just gonna offer it up and make sure the holes are in the right place before we make them any bigger. Pretty good. Cool. Right, got my little baggy A. And... Right, okay, that's roughly in position where I want it to be. So now I'm just gonna drill some smaller pilot holes up here. Just doing this, I'm just sort of almost starting the holes really. Yeah, so we've got our two pilot holes started there. We can go a little bit deeper now. Perfect. All right, let's stretch out those holes. Yeah, it's less than ideal having to go in the mortar, but you know, not much you can do. There's a little tap in. Okay, so we've got the mic from my camera and the video from the doorbell. It's actually got a really good wide range. So in theory, I'm all the way over here and, and it goes really wide down the road as well. That's, that's amazing. I'm really impressed by the view. I might need the angly guy, maybe. I don't know, we'll have to see how it goes, but yeah, it's got a good view. And I mean, it says it can view packages. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, I'd say this is about 20 centimetres from the front door and you can see my drill. Not like that. Nice, but the picture's really clear and bright. Excellent. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep them both in operation 
like today and overnight and they'll both record the same things in motion hopefully and then we can compare the video quality so i think what we'll do is we'll pause the video here and then come back tomorrow and we can have a little look at what it's recording and how it's worked so uh, yeah see you tomorrow okay so spoiler alert it's not actually tomorrow it's still today but i realized we hadn't actually set up much of the camera stuff within the app like i said so we'll do that quickly now and then tomorrow or later on in the video, we can compare some video footage and stuff like that. So we've got my app here and uh, we can go into the front door settings. Now I think we need to play with the motion settings. Okay, so this is editing the zones that the motion detection works in. Now, as you can see here, We've got uh, my neighbor's path and I don't really want the camera going nuts every time they leave the house. So what we'll do is we'll press edit zones. So we've got some little points here. So um, yeah, you just basically change it to what's relevant for you. So if motion is detected in any of this zone that I've drawn, it will notify me. But if there's any motion outside of that zone, then it won't tell me because basically I don't really care if that car over there moves. It's, it's irrelevant, it doesn't matter to me. Now, smart alerts. So this is where we set up uh, package notifications. So um, yeah, we wanna get a record when there's a package left on the doorstep. So we'll turn on the feature. Okay, so what packages are detected? You'll receive package alerts, most reliably for standard shipping boxes with each side around 10 inches or larger. Probably that will happen. Uh, you probably won't get notified when envelopes, tubes or grocery or meals arrive. Okay, so that's fine. So we'll continue that. How are packages detected? So basically we're gonna make another zone that we're interested in packages. Sounds wrong. Right, okay, so we'll do that. Oh, and they appear as package events in your timeline. Okay, cool. Right, so let's create our package zone. So generally, when people leave packages outside our house, it's sort of just on this bit here. So that covers sort of like the front doorstep and a little bit onto the shrubbery, if it's a really big package. Okay, continue. Nice, cool, so we turned on package alerts. I might be able to show it in action because I am due a delivery from Amazon today, so I might get him to leave it on the doorstep. We'll see. Right, so at the moment, we've got it set up in our motion zones to record and notify us if there's a person in our motion zone, but other motion, so like a car running past or a dog or cat running past, it doesn't record and it doesn't notify us. So you can obviously switch that on if you want to know everything that's going on outside your house. But obviously the more alerts and things you have switched on, it will run down the battery life of the device. Right, okay. So look, there we go. We've got our zones now. We've got our package zone and we've got our motion zone. Nice. Uh, motion sensitivity. So there we go. You can adjust the slider to adjust the sensitivity. I will keep it at that level at the moment. It's really hard to tell what the perfect setting is because obviously everyone's outside of home is different. We'll leave it on there and obviously if I miss notifications or it misses things, then we can move the sliders around to adjust that. But that's how you do that. Motion schedules. So there you go. You can change when it's looking for motion. So if you don't want it to notify you about motions during the day, then you can add a schedule. Or if you want to, don't want to know about motion, motions at night, then you can add that to the schedule. I won't bother doing that because I just want it sort of doing it all the time. Now, motion frequency. Set how often this device should check for motion. Now, I'm going to change this to frequently. It does reduce the battery life slightly, but I just want the camera to be sort of on the ball, really. It's not recording the whole entire time. The camera senses something happening and then starts recording and changing this setting basically adjusts how how often the camera is checking for stuff happening. So you can whack it down to periodically. I mean, if you maybe live in an 
area where there's literally no other people, then you might not need it on as much. But yeah, we'll, we'll keep, we'll put it on frequently. Right, let's um, check a few other camera settings because they're not necessarily on to start with. So if we go into power settings, now this is where you can adjust things, but they do have a negative well, or positive effect on the power. I've got it set so it captures a snapshot outside the house every hour. Now you can change it to take one every 14 minutes. So it will check, it will take a little snapshot of outside um, every 14 minutes. I'm sure it will reduce the battery life because obviously it's doing it four times as much, but that's fine. Um, motion frequency, yep, yeah, we just changed that. And video recording length, video recording continue until motion stops up to 30 seconds. Now, if there is motion again after those 30 seconds, it will just start another recording. It won't just ignore stuff like that. What other things are there? Ah. Now, this is interesting. This is the uh, video settings of the camera. Automatically, to start with, HDR and colour night vision are turned off. You'd think that they'd want to sort of show off the best video quality. I have switched both of those on. The only problem is with our setup is there's a um, up and down light directly above where the camera is, so that might interfere with nighttime recordings. I might have to adjust the settings on the, the lights, maybe. We'll see. Um, tap camera preview for a live view. So basically, I'll turn that on actually. So when you go into the app, it will instantly show you a live view rather than you having to tap again for a live view. So if we test that now, if I tap on the front door, it's instantly gone to a live view. If you had that option unchecked, you'd then have to press the button again to go live, but we're straight into live view. And there's outside as it looks quite like now. So if we wanna go live, press that one, two, three, less than three seconds, nice. Um, and also while you're looking at the live view, you can tap the microphone icon so people can hear you and you can tap the speaker icon so you can hear them. So we can turn the speaker on. And you, so you could listen to someone without them hearing you going, oh look, there's someone at the front door. Before we disappear off, let's just go and look at the uh, old front door camera. So that is the view. So you can see it doesn't show the full pathway up to the door, but you've got to remember that this camera is actually mounted on the front door because it goes through the spy hole. So it is set back further. I think the view is on this is pretty similar from the horizontal view. I think they've got a very similar viewing angle, but the vertical viewing angle is reduced. So let's just go to the new camera and compare the viewing angle. Yeah, you see a lot more of the path. You see those extra two slabs there. I think they're 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters, those slabs out the front. And yeah, you get a much better full head to toe view. So that does work, but yeah, I don't know how well it's going to work with seeing packages right on the front doorstep. We'll have to investigate. Yeah, might have to go and leave a package. That sounds wrong. Anyway, so that is a brief overview of the settings for the camera in the app. Uh, so now what we'll actually do is come back tomorrow and compare the footage between the old camera and the new camera and see how it's all worked out. Um, yeah, so see you tomorrow or literally seconds for you. Okay, so I've amassed some clips of both my old and new doorbell in action and uh, we can quickly go through them. So the old doorbell is framed in a landscape view like that, but the new one, because it's got the head to toe, it's more of a square view. So to make it sort of fair, I've basically made the old and new occupy the same width. So you can see the addition of the height in the new one 
um, and it just makes it a little bit more fair. Something worth mentioning about all the clips is each one starts when the ring camera starts recording. I've not trimmed anything off the front of the clips so you can see exactly when the recording starts and compare the two. So I've run through a few sort of different scenarios and uh, yeah, let's go through them now. So this is me and Vicky coming back from a walk and going down the side of the house. Looks pretty good on the old one. But I think the new one, uh, it definitely looks a bit better. I think the colors are a bit more realistic and it starts recording us just a smidge earlier. So now this is a sort of typical thing, a parcel being delivered by Royal Mail. I've had to blur the side of the screen because my neighbor walks into shot. But yeah, this is your sort of standard typical thing. Someone coming to your door and um, them chatting to you. I've obviously had to blur out the postie's face for privacy reasons. And here it is again on the new version. I think the recording starts a little bit sooner again. And once again, I think the colors are more accurate. Yeah, it looks good. I'm happy with that. And I like the wider view that we get. So far, so good. And this is just an example of it catching motion. Here's the old one with the Tesco van pulling in and reversing. And then again, it's starting a little bit earlier the record on the new one and colors are looking great. It really does excel during the daytime, I think. So the big thing about the Ring Battery Video Doorbell Plus is the fact that it recognizes packages. So I set up a quick scenario where I had a package delivered by me. And sure enough, here you can see on the Ring web interface and indeed on my phone, it did say that a package had been delivered to my package zone. And now we can see me bringing the package on the new old doorbell and it goes out of shot when it's in the doorway. So you can't actually see it. And again, this is me delivering a parcel on the new doorbell and it stays in shot the whole time, which is quite good. You can see the parcel on your doorstep. Brilliant. Now, I did wonder if it would tell you if someone had stolen a parcel because obviously the parcel is there. But what happens if it goes? Well, it's actually quite interesting. It did recognize both on the phone and through the web interface that indeed a parcel had been moved, but it didn't actually tell me that it had been taken away. It just gave me a package notification, but it's cool that it recognized that a package was doing something. Maybe in a future software update, they could maybe differentiate between the two, but I actually think it works quite well. So we can see a shady guy running up to pick up the parcel and run away with it on the old camera. And then we switch the new camera again. It's starting that record a little bit earlier and you can see him taking away the parcels. So yeah, it's actually quite smart how it can notice the parcels. That seems to work. I don't know how well it'll work with a smaller parcel, but with those sort of average size Amazon boxes, seem to work beautifully. Now it seems to perform really well in the daytime. I'm really happy with the performance, but what about at night? So I've got a few clips to show you here. Now, something that's actually quite interesting on all of the clips from the new doorbell is they actually look better on my phone when I watch them back. When I've downloaded the clips and put them into the video, they don't look as good. It's almost like the encoding on the downloaded clips just isn't quite high enough to do them justice. So I would say that the video clips you're about to see of the new doorbell are actually better when you're viewing them on your phone. I think it's probably a software thing on ringside where maybe they haven't adapted things for this new camera. So hopefully that will change in time. But yeah, I don't think this gives a fair representation of how the footage looks at night compared to how it will look on your phone. Anyway, let's look at those clips. So yeah, this is just me having a live view on the front door on the old camera. Looks okay, you know, you can sort of see around the doorway area, but further back, not much at all. And again, this is it on the new doorbell. I think you get a slightly brighter view for sure. And obviously you can see more of the shots. Then we've got an example of someone approaching the house at night. Now, two things I wish I'd done in hindsight is one, get a little bit closer to the camera 
and two, try it again with the color night vision turned off. We'll talk about that in a second. So yeah, that's me approaching the camera and just sort of loitering on the doorstep with a little wave. It's actually not too bad at all on the old camera. I will give it that. It looks pretty good. And then I'm just sauntering out of shot. Yeah, and again, it takes a few moments for the new one to stabilize and it's definitely more pixelated at the start than it is on viewing it on my phone. Now this is where I wish I'd got a little bit closer to the camera, but you know, never mind. So yeah, those are a few example clips. I'm not sure about the color night vision. It didn't really seem all that colorful. Yeah, I just don't know if the sensor's big enough to pick up colors. It's a bit of a weird one, really. You know, you couldn't say, oh, Kip was wearing blue jeans or this colored top. It, it just looked sort of standard night vision-y. There's not a great deal of difference between them at night, really. You do get a slightly further back view, in my opinion, on the new camera. I don't think the color night vision adds much to it. Maybe what I'll do is I'll make a little short showing it similar thing with the color night vision off and that'll give it a fair test. But yeah, it's really disappointing that the video clips you download from the Ring site aren't exactly the same as they are on your phone because you do lose a bit of quality and that is disappointing and makes this review a little bit harder because it just doesn't look as good. Is this worth the extra money? I think it is because I really like the package detection. I really like that wider view so you can see a lot more of what's going on, especially when people are closer to your property. I think you do lose a bit of definition sort of further back with people kind of walking past, but ultimately this isn't designed to be a nosy person. This is just designed to kind of give a view in front of your property and I think it does that really well. I'm really pleased with how it looks. Now, should you take off your existing ring doorbell and replace it with this one? I'm not so sure. I think, I think you know, ring doorbells are generally quite good, but there is definitely a slight marked difference in its response time from it sort of starting the record. I've recorded a lot more clips than you've seen on here. Um, just to kind of test it and get an overall view. The Ring Battery Video Doorbell Plus definitely starts recording a little bit quicker than my existing one. So obviously I can't compare it between all of them, but I think all the previous ones are built on a similar kind of platform. So you do get those extra split seconds, which could be the difference between seeing someone who's about to break into your house or not. Um, so yeah, it does have that. It's literally a second, maybe maybe two, where it's just woken up that little bit sooner. I would say if you don't have a ring doorbell at the moment, then go for this one from the get go, because obviously it's newer. I think the video quality is really good and obviously more updates will come to it in time and you might find that the older ring doorbells don't get as many updates. So yeah, I know it's been a bit of a lengthy video, but I've tried to cover everything and make it as helpful as possible. So if it has, make sure you give it a massive thumbs up and drop a comment below and tell me what you think about it. So yeah, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now it's game over.